it is authorized every six years. And the last time that was authorized was in 2005. So you got about you've got received today about 33 million. You have spent to date about 13. Well, about about 10 of that. So you're down to about a balance in federal funds of about 22 million dollars. Uh, in addition to that, you have spent. As required by law, most of those federal funds require an 80-20 max. That is, uh, for every dollar you spend, you've got to provide about 20 cents uh, in, in county uh, funding. So you spend, in addition to the federal funds, you spend now, correct me if I'm wrong, probably four to five million in, in um, county funds. The activities that you have underway right now, uh, once completed, will will obligate um, as I said down to about a balance of twenty two million dollars. You have some options that, that have been placed before you for proceeding then with the next steps which could be uh, uh, completion of all the right of way required for the project, um, various options for construction constructing certain segments of the parkway. So you have options available to you now that you could proceed with that would spend down the remainder of your federal funds and your obligated county match so that um, uh, you can demonstrate to Congress, to the congressional delegation, that you have put a plan in place to, to spend the funds that they have given you. So, And you've discussed that uh, in, in recent week. Now, other options, you're, as I understand your question, what other options do you have for funding? Is that, is that if question? you would uh, also discuss the creation of the uh, utility, uh, well, of course, we're going to again continue to seek additional funding from our congressional delegation as well as from our Mississippi State Legislature. But there are also means that we can put in uh, place that I'll, I'll refer to. I'll just let me ask some yes, Mr. Stokes, thank you. Uh, you said that since 2002 we've had 33 million federal funds. We've spent 13 million. And you said we're going to spend it all the 22 million. Now, if we spend, and then you said we can keep, we can show that we're moving forward and blah, 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 blah. If we spend 33 million, and it's not big. Do we have to pay them under that? No, no, sir. To my to my knowledge, you do not have to pay that. <coughs> if, if you if you went ahead and spent all of that money to do that, you would have to build um, at least one or two segments that are now on the books, so to speak, to be built. Having built those, you would have separable standalone pieces of the parkway that would be would function of themselves, and therefore those would be. I see no scenario under which you would have to pay that money back. No, that's now that's as a lawyer speaking. No, I, I'm speaking. I, no, I'm an engineer. I'm not. Okay. All right. I'm speaking just by my knowledge of the way the federal highway program works. But we have to be a, out of something in order not to have to pay it back, no, whether no. it's complete well, or not. Miss Miss uh, Miss Early on, um, I had met with the. Uh, Federal Highway Administration, mm -hmm. and along with uh, Mississippi State Aid, uh, Mississippi Department of Transportation, the State Aid Division, and they have given Hines County the authorization to build the corridor in segments. We do not have to construct the entire corridor. <coughs> what sex, sex, what segments that we choose is left up to this board. So if we want to be a segment uh, 1A alone uh, by itself, or if we want to be a segment 1A with segment 2, then we can move forward from doing so. We do not have to complete the construction of the construction rather, of the entire corridor. It is the intent of this movement that we initiate construction at both ends of the corridor. We initiate construction at the Bolton Memorial Road interchange, <coughs> all the way down to the San uh, to San Harry Road. Likewise, uh, we start construction at I fifty uh, at Southwell Road to I believe it's Davis Parks Road. Uh, that's that's segment two. We have the authority to work with any segment of the corridor. Uh, the corridor has been divided into five different segments. 
<coughs> How much money do we have to complete per second? We have uh, approximately, I think, $22 million left. I'm talking about to complete. What segment would that complete? Um, with, with the money we have in place, um, we, we can uh, start construction on both ends. And, and we would need, including right away, an additional uh, $17 uh, million. But, but it's the board's original intent to start at both ends and work our way toward constructing the middle because we don't have enough funds to uh, construct the entire corridor of work. That's what I'm saying. We don't have enough funds for the entire corridor. The amount of funds we have, what can we construct? That, that's what I'm asking because the chance of being able to complete the whole corridor seems to be none. And the way we get out of this, from what I'm hearing and this engineer say, is that if we spend the money on at least a phase, we complete that, then we don't have to pay the money back. Now that's what I'm hearing. We don't have to. Well, keep, keep in mind that the money that you do have, Congress has directed to Hines County. However, the state of Mississippi, the state of uh, the Office of State Aid Road Construction, is the designated agency that administers that funding. <laughs> So they, they will not allow the county to proceed with a segment with a construction contract unless the funding is in place. So they're, they're, that system is in place to keep you from getting in a position to, to, that you would start a project and then not have funds to fin finish it. So, so that would, that's the reason I say that you would not pay the money back because the state would not allow you to get in that position to begin with of starting a project and then not having the funds to complete it. Because you can only let that contract when the state has, has agreed that you have the funds available to complete. Okay, let's so go. That's helpful. Thank you. Go, let's go to Mr. Fisher, and then we'll go back to Ms. Calhoun, and then to Mr. Stokes again. We can summarize this pretty quickly, I think. This project has started. The project started with the paving and work done in, on, on uh, Solo Road in Byron. Uh, now the project is moving into other phases. First phase, of course, is the purchasing of the property. That's an ongoing process. Uh, and right now, 100% of the property is not purchased in any of the sections. So we can't begin construction until we've purchased all the property. Uh, there's $17 million back up. The board can, 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 can once the property is, is properly purchased, and we have 100% of it, the board can, if with the money they have right now, can build either section 1A or 2 individually. Now, if the board decides that it wants to build 1A and 2 together, that will require an additional $17 million. My belief is, is that we are showing progress. We are going through the congressional requirements, the legal requirements to purchase the land. It is lengthy, uh, but we are going through those steps. And at a time when, when we are ready to uh, decide if we want to go with only one segment or only two segments or both segments, at that point, then we can go back to Congress. We can show our representatives that we have made the required pro progress and then see if they allot the $17 million. If they choose not to, then we'll go with one of the segments. One segment will take about two years to build. Okay? So if we can build segments 1A and 2, segment 2 is outside of Byron. Okay, segment 1A is around John Bell Williams Airport. If we can build those segments uh, uh, together in those two years, we can build those uh, sections 1A and 2. If we have to wait uh, and build them separately, then it will take four years to get them out there. And by then, we will have completed the work for sections 3 and 4, purchasing the property, and then you move into the uh, uh, congressional request for additional funds. No highway is, is funded by Congress at 100%, and it's total entirety. It's done on the budgeting cycle basis of Congress and broken down over the periods of time based on when it's ready to go. Um, I, I, and let me just add this, I, I am sad to hear that the mayor is opposed to the project, uh, Jackson. Um, I, I happen to believe that when, when the water rises in the county, all boats rise and all of us profit from this. All of us have an opportunity to, uh, to, 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 to make Hines County better and to be a better place. Uh, I guess the same argument could be made that uh, uh, Plantonians uh, Byron, Terry, Utica, Bolton, Edwards, I didn't mean 
anybody out, weren't we? Uh, less than 3% of the people who spent the night last night in the uh, incarcerated in the Hines County jail system came from those cities. 10% came from out of Hines County. The remainder came from Jackson. So there's a lot of money being spent on county projects or on county responsibilities that we all contribute to, making the whole. There's seven hundred seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, I believe, a year for the. Is that what the figure is, Mr. Uh, yes. Mr. Lewis, for the uh, city's uh, uh, radio system. Yes. Uh, and there's a lot of money being spent in Jackson by the county. We all benefit from that. Everyone benefits from that. We can't look at it in an isolated way. To say that, then means the Hines County may look back and say, okay, old Capital Green, how does that benefit Bolton? How does that benefit you? And we just can't have that kind of mindset. So I hope the uh, mayor was misquoted in that matter or uh, was uh, would, would at least rethink his thoughts on that because everybody everybody does better. When, when one part grows, everybody profits. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Calhoun and then Mr. Stokes. I'll go ahead and uh, defer to our bond attorney. Well, very briefly, I think the bigger picture is that the county uh, took it upon itself to pursue this project many years ago. And uh, I'm Tony Gaylor, uh, attorney with Chambers and Gaylor Law Firm. And uh, over the course of the years, the, the, the board has made uh, numerous decisions to try and make this project work. Um, the project uh, by all estimation, will be a very um, extensive project that will yield great economic benefit to this county. Um, the comparisons that are made are to, if there's anything to compare it to locally, would be probably uh, the uh, um, Highland, Col Highland Colony Parkway, uh, but to a much larger extent. In fact, it would be twice the size of the Highland Colony Parkway. Uh, maybe it's more comparable to uh, Lakeland Drive to some extent. but. Either way, the project um, would yield significant economic benefit to the county because as it stands right now, we don't have as much development within the county as the county has expressed that it desires. So nevertheless, the uh, several sources of revenue that would come from that project include uh, the escalation of the property uh, value all along that uh, corridor as a result of economic development taking place um, and other uh, means as well. Okay. Uh, Mr. Stokes. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, I'm glad I put the this item on the agenda uh, because it shows exactly what I was saying. This ain't going to be big. Now, I hear uh, Supervisor Fisher say he's good for Congress to finish everything up in different phase, but we know the Congress that we have currently is not going to pay 100% toward uh, this parkway. The only way this is going to be bigger is if the city of Jackson come in and if Supervisor Fisher say the things he said to the mayor of Jackson, you can kiss that goodbye. If you think he's going to listen to you saying that you couldn't so up $750,000 on the radio system when the city of Jackson think they should deserve more. If you think you're going to say that the people in jail are Jackson and Bolton should, should be complaining, if you think you're going to say those things to mad this city and saying that yes, it's okay for Jackson to pay for a parkway from Byron to Clinton, then you should walk it. Now what we got to do is work together, try to get somebody to talk to the mayor and others. Now we've had the county administrator and the legal department to talk. We'll have the supervisor to talk. And if they're going to be supporting the mayor, you got your mind. Now, if it's going to be a reality, somebody needs to start talking to the mayor and let's create some win-win. Otherwise, if you think that the United States government is going to pay 1% for this parkway, then I think that what we're doing, we're trying to create certain divisions to be completed and leave the rest of it out. And that's what's about to happen. You're going to complete, as I'm here today, 1A, then you're going to complete 2, and the rest of it ain't going to be done. But the people in 2 and 1A, they're going to benefit. And I don't think that's what the plan of the parkway is. Thank you, Ms. Calhoun. The reason that um, the previous board has opted to start in uh, segments of 1A is because of the economic benefits that segment 1A brings to Hines County. 
in Sector 1A, we have Times Community College. Times Community College um, is working with our John Bell Williams Airport to bring industry into the airport. Uh, the problem is the industrial park, the aviation park, does not have direct access to the park and the corridor will lend to that access. Once we, we've had two aviation companies to approach uh, Pines County regarding moving into the park. Companies that are paying decent wages, um, companies that are paying decent salaries into the tens of thousands of, of dollars that left and went elsewhere because Hines County did not have the infrastructure, uh, the utilities to, to provide services uh, to these uh, two different companies. On the southern end, uh, economic development is already being created. One of our develop developers has plans for relocating his headquarters on to the parkway. And when he and his business is in the area of computer data, etc. I won't begin to discuss what all he does, but he's also manufactures an uh, unmanned area devices. But once he, he relocates his headquarters to the corridor, that corridor will provide beautiful opportunities to our uh, college graduates that are in the field of engineering. Again, uh, jobs pay decent salaries. Uh, also, uh, the developer has uh, plans for bringing in high-end residential, um, along with other uh, uh, commercial uh, businesses. So when we talk about economic development, Hines County, we're talking about job creations for the, for the citizens of all of Hines County, not just Jackson, but, but, but for everybody. There will be uh, plenty of job opportunities. When we talk about economic development for Hines County, we're talking about increasing our tax base. Uh, when we talk about economic development and we bring in retail development, uh, into Hines County. We're talking about uh, keeping our own sales tax dollars. Right now, we have very limited choices or very limited stores to choose from when it comes to, to retail. What do we do? We go across the county line and we spend Millions of dollars. As a matter of fact, Madison and Rankin are thriving very well off of the sales tax dollars that are coming from the citizens of Hines County. I believe in keeping those sales tax dollars, some of them anyway, into Hines County um, so that we can develop and grow economically, so that we can again provide jobs. We're talking about jobs in all fields. Central Mississippi Medical Center is looking forward to uh, the construction of the port. Why? Because that's going to create um, uh, more business for that particular <coughs> hospital. If, if once the corridor is, is built and rooftops are, 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 are uh, cropping up or popping up or whatever, um, that means more business for them. Uh, that means more patients for them. That means that they will, bring, they will bring in more doctors and nurses and they will bring in more employees. The mayor is the only person that I have heard that is in opposition of this corridor. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you why some of the reasons that he says, the reasons that he says that he is in opposition to this corridor. When, when you have, um, right now, we are also su supporting the suburbs of other counties because in Hines County, we not only have white, white, we have black, uh, black. 
people are leaving Jackson because of crime. And, and, uh, and because there is very limited economic development opportunities here. This board has a chance to really uh, move Hines County forward by supporting this project. Everybody that I have talked with is in support of this project, except for the man. And again, I'm not going to sit here and list had a, a long list of reasons why he was in objection to the construction of this corner. And let me just say, um, uh, Hines County has other industrial parts that we are working toward recruiting businesses. And again, it's for the creation of jobs for all of Hines County. My district is 100% in the city of Jackson. But as I sit here on this board, I represent, again, all of Hines County. There is enough opportunity in Hines County for the mayor of the city of Jackson to move forward with the revitalization and the redevelopment of the Highway 80 corridor along with this Hines County Board of Supervisors working toward uh, developing and constructing the Byron Clinton corridor. Okay. There's Hello. enough room for growth for the two of us. I don't see where Madison County is, is fighting with, um, the, uh, with their board of supervisors because of economic development. I don't see where Brayford is fighting with its board, um, the, the, the city officials are fighting with their board of uh, supervisors in the name of economic development. And it's because they too, the two bodies know that there is enough room in, in these counties for all of us to work with a common plan in place, a common goal for the people that we represent. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we will uh, uh, Mr. Stokes and we'll close out from there. Okay. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, and, and that's what I'm saying is going to take everybody working together. And uh, Madam Supervisor, I hear what you're saying, and it sounds good. But what I'm saying, if we take a bun, that means the city of Jackson got to vote. I don't care how you add it up. Seventy percent of Hines County is not Clinton, it's not Byron, it's Jackson. And when you tell the, the people in Jackson that it's going to be good for everybody, but you're going to have to pay for it, they don't want to hear that. Now, I'm just saying, now we can put it to a vote, and, and, and you, can, you can say everybody you hear it say, well, there's no need us going back and forth because if you send us on a, if you're going to move it forward in terms of a bond issue, the mayor has made the commitment that if you do a bond issue, we're going to get, they're going to get the 1,500 names, then it's going to go to a vote. Now, if you go to a vote, then it's going to move from win-win to win-lose. Somebody's going to lose, somebody's going to win. My suggestion, while we still got time, while we don't have blood in the water, let's create a win-win, let's start negotiating and everybody talking. But if you believe that the citizens in, in Jackson going to vote for this bond issue to create a viral, clean parkway, well, we, we can end discussion. Let's go on, do the bond, and let's do everything. Let's put it to the vote. One of us going to be true, one of us going to be lying. But let's go do it. Ain't no need to go back and forth. Okay. Oh, thank you. All right, thank you. Let's, 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 let's do one. Let's let me do. just mention one thing. We're talking about uh, coming up with innovative ways, innovative means. For generating revenue, once a certain segment of that corridor is is, is constructed, then Hines County would ge generate revenues. We would generate taxes from the construction. Those taxes would help pay toward the uh, the construction of the rest of the, 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 the corridor. So we're not talking about putting a tax burden on anyone uh, at at this junction. You can't get anything, you can't reap any kind of uh, tax benefits unless you put out a few tax dollars. So far, we have been fortunate again that we have received federal funding. Just because we received 30 million doesn't mean that we're going to stop and sit on our laws. We're going to continue to seek additional revenue. 
we're talking about the creation of a utility district that will also help to generate revenues and pay off any kind of fund and benefits. It's, it's, we're, we're not going to depend upon the citizens to, to uh, <coughs> fund this project. Okay. Uh, Attorney Gaylor, if you would just take one second to explain the benefits of, of even creating the utility district, also developing public-private partnerships. Okay, let, let's let's do one thing. Right, we've been on this issue now for about 27 minutes, um, and it is a good issue, and it's been a very good discussion. Um, so together, we will complete your request, uh, but after this, we'll just go ahead and move on and uh, move this uh, agenda along. So, Mr. Uh, Ms. Callum and Mr. Gaylor, and then we'll go ahead and move on from this particular point. Just very briefly, the purpose of a utility district would be to uh, create uh, a stream of revenue, or several streams of revenue that would prevent the um, uh, or, or at least uh, mitigate as much as possible any uh, tax burden from uh, going to uh, other parts of the uh, county uh, for the construction of the park. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming up and giving us uh, an overview of um, the Baron Clinton Parkway. I believe Mr. Stokes, you have one additional item. Thank right you. Here. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I want a young lady that needs no introduction, uh, Mrs. Esther Reeves. Uh, Mrs. Risby is synonymous to education, higher education, and to making sure that young people <coughs> have a positive future. She has worked at Tougaloo College for a number of years. Her son is Dr. Risby, and I think the other son is Attorney Risby, and her husband is Dr. Risby, the first black administrator with uh, Jackson Public Schools. Mrs. Risby was the 2012 Woman of the Year for the state of Mississippi. Mrs. Risby was the Grand Marshal for the Martin Luther King Jr. Birthday Celebration Parade, the largest celebration in the United States of America. We're going to ask Mrs. Risby to come forward and we'll present her with one of the first signs. Mrs. Rigsby, on behalf of Hines County, who would like to present you this sign. Mrs. Esther Rigsby, 2012 Woman of the Year. We thank you so much for all your hard work in Hines County throughout the state of Mississippi and the United States of America. And we ask you to say some words of encouragement to us all. Thank you very much uh, to all of these supervisors and most of all, Mrs. Stokes. I'd like to thank you very much for this opportunity to receive this. It means so much to me, it really does. And let me just say that I have done a lot of work over a period of years with children, with the adults, community, outside of the community. But I was not working alone. I had other people to help me. So I cannot get all of the credit. In addition to having my family, who uh, has always been by my side. I had people across the country who helped me. So it is a, indeed a pleasure to be able to come and receive this. I count this as one of the greatest honors that I have received. <coughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Calhoun. We will continue to move on with uh, the printed agenda. We will now go. Um, is that all, Mr. Stokes? Under your Thank you. Mr. Okay. President. Okay. We will we'll now go to the county administrator, Mrs. Carmen Davis. Mrs. Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. The first item under county administrator is unclaimed bodies. There is one unclaimed body to report to the city. Okay. 
What's the pleasure of the board? It has been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and properly second. Discussion. Discussion. Uh, Mr. David, I see this on here me now. The unclean bodies, is that when someone passed within in the way in Hines County and then we buried them in the proper field? Or what, what is that? Yes, sir. That's exactly it. Now, what's 